Hi everyone, welcome to East Coast Sailing. I'm Rob and today I'm gonna to share all my technology hacks for boating. Now, these hacks are too good not to share because I think they're gonna elevate your sailing experience, they're gonna make you safer on the water and you'll be more informed about the applications available that don't cost much at all compared to the hardware. Um, so keep watching all the way through to the end of the video. I guarantee you're gonna learn something new whether you're a beginner or you've been sailing for years, you're probably not utilizing the technology you have already as well as the applications that are out there to make you safer on the water, to make better forecasting decisions um, and you'll enjoy your sailing a lot more. First up is AIS, which stands for Automatic Identification System. AIS is not a new technology. Ships have been required to have this capability since 2000. It's a collision avoidance tool between vessels and its benefits are being felt in leisure sectors for boating. On the maritime traffic page I have up, each of these arrows represents a boat. You can click on any of the arrows and it will bring up specific information. Dynamic information will be broadcast for navigational status, whether it's under engine or sailing, the rate of turn, speed over ground, position, course over ground, heading or bearing at own position. If your boat is on a collision path with another vessel, it will sound the alarm notifying you to take evasive action. You can set the collision distance alarm based on your boat's size, speed or the ones you're likely to encounter. Static and voyage related information is also broadcasted such as the International Maritime Organisation number, call sign, boat name, boat type, cargo, dimensions, draft, destination and ETA. Having this information enables you to make established communication quicker with specific vessels. And if I was sailing past you and you clicked on my boat, this is the kind of dashboard and information you would see against Ivania. Currently I'm at anchor because I'm at home. Early domestic capability came in the form of this NASA AIS radar. This is still being sold for about 250 quid. It allows you to see other boats, but other boats can't see you because it's not a transponder and it still needs to be connected to a chart plotter, have its own independent aerial or a splitter box, and also have cabling and power supplies. VHF units in the last seven years have started incorporating AIS information on the displays, however they're never in a convenient place to view when you're sailing. If you want to be seen by other vessels, you'll need to add a transponder, which is category B. Now this whole setup would cost you about £1,400. Would you believe me if I told you you don't need any of this technology? You can use your mobile phone and download an application called Boat Beacon for £15. It will transform your phone not only into an AIS receiver, but a transponder so other boats can see your position. Boat Beacon has its limitations. It relies on phone signal to have AIS, so as soon as you go any further than 10 or 12 miles offshore, you lose the ability to have AIS and be able to transpond to other boats. If you do a lot of solo sailing, AIS allows your family to monitor your progress and they'll know when you got into port safely. It gives everyone a bit of peace of mind and they can raise the alarm if something goes wrong. These images show a trip where my family was tracking me from Tollsbury traveling to Ramsgate. My next hack is about obtaining really accurate weather forecast information. I only found this hack out a couple of weeks ago since starting my YouTube channel and having to play around with exported navigation files. I'd normally obtain my weather information by looking at two or three stations along the planned route at various times to get a broad overview. Now this hack works with windy.com website which is really accurate, it can tell you your wind speeds, wind gusts, you can also find out about the sea state and the wave heights, there's so many options on this website and I'm sure it's not just restricted to windy.com. Now if you open up the top left hand corner to the navigation bar, you'll see lots of options there. And I actually found a function where you can import navigational routes in GPX file or KMZ. I'm gonna plot an example route using CNAV on my mobile phone and import it as a GPX file into windy.com. Open up your emails and save the GPX file onto your desktop. Once the GPX file has been imported into Windy, it will display the actual planned route. Now the imported route is visible on the Windy desktop website, we can click on each of the waypoints to see what the wind speed is doing. We can also toggle forward the timeline to see what the wind changes are going to be throughout the day. We can also click on wave information to see what the wave heights are, as well as the swell patterns. There's so much information on this website. We can actually go to more layers and there's so much more information we can actually process. You can also change different weather models on the bottom right hand corner depending on what you find more reliable. My last hack is AR, which stands for Augmented Reality. You can get Augmented Reality on your mobile phone using CNAV by purchasing an £8 add-on. 
Using your phone's camera, you can point it towards the horizon and it will overlay compass information as well as interactive waypoints and any AIS information. It will also show you a track in 3D. Although this hack's a little bit gimmicky, it's good fun. Thanks for watching East Coast Sailing. Hopefully you've learned something today and if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications and join me next time.